Well, good morning, Parkview. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. It's good to be here with you all. Uh, we're just really glad that you could be with us on this day. So um, we just want to let you know that we have a few announcements here. And for those of you who may be online for the first time, my name is Pamela, and I'm the interim pastor here at Parkview. And we have two wonderful pastoral residents. We have Rola and Veronica, so you'll be seeing all of us during the service today. We just wanted you to know. So today we are, uh, for the congregation, we are not going to have a Zoom coffee hour afterwards. We're going to go immediately into um, a uh, congregational meeting. So make sure to look at your weekly newsletter and then also we put it, we sent out the Chapel Chimes, the monthly newsletter, and you will see there on Zoom or in that letter, the, the link to get to, to be able to be a part of that conversation. And if you are not on Zoom, uh, feel free to call the church office, the number there, and you can leave any questions that you have and um, I'd be more than happy to answer them. So just want you to be aware. So what we're looking at is just for the short-term extension uh, for six months for the residency program here at Parkview. And that's what we will be talking about at that time. So then this Tuesday, we're having a Bible study. And um, I think I'm leading it, right? You're leading it. Wow, okay, so Veronica's leading it this week. And so uh, we're going to be doing a Bible study on healing. So this month we're looking at healing. And uh, so Veronica will be leading that. And we're leading up to this because in October, this is a mental health awareness month. And so we are going to be then leading up to the month of October where uh, Rolla will be uh, leaning into her legacy project, which is all around mental health and conversations around that. So that's gonna be really exciting. And uh, so just want you to be aware, that's why we're looking at healing for the month of September. And then um, we will have, I'm still looking, uh, next week we will also have a congregational meeting as well, just for those of you who are not able to be on the Zoom call today. And then uh, also Paula it has a lecture that's gonna be happening, and this is Kiyoshi's daughter. And that will be happening September 16th at 7 p.m. And again, you'll have all that information in the chapel chimes and elsewhere. If you'd like more information on that, please reach out to Rola uh, and she'll have that information for you. Are there any other announcements I need to be aware of? So go ahead and uh, go to that. Oh, it's uh, consumption and resistance among Japanese Americans. Food production, consumption, I missed the first line. Food consumption, or food production, consumption, and resistance among Japanese Americans. Thank you. Uh, any other announcements at this time? Okay, hearing none, let us continue with our worship. We have Mental Health Awareness Month. We have a special guest that will be uh, preaching on Sunday, October 4th. His name is David Woods Bartley. He's amazing. You will want to hear him. He's really incredible. Yes, please, come on over. Good morning, everyone. So um, as Pastor Pamela mentioned, October, we're going to be talking about mental health and mental wellness the whole month. Uh, David is our main speaker. He's going to preach for us on October 4th. And then after that, uh, he's going to be there on Zoom coffee hour. So I really want to encourage your participation. Um, we don't want our guest speaker to, uh, to feel discouraged on his very first day with us. After that, he's going to be doing our Bible studies on Tuesday evening. So if you don't usually attend our Tuesday evening Bible studies, um, I really want to encourage you to try and make this one because um, especially in this pandemic, uh, mental wellness is becoming more and more important. Uh, so thank you for your participation. There are already people from the Presbytery who are not from Parkview who have reached out to me and who want to attend that. So uh, let's show a good model. <laughs> thank you. 
we have a video. Yes. Well, we are here in Curtis Park, and I'm with Jody and Dina. Hi. Dina, you're growing up. I haven't yeah. seen you in five months. Yeah. Golly. Well, Jody, uh, five months with this new uh, normal. What you been up to? Well, we want to say hello first to our Parkview family, and I uh, want to say hello, and we hope everyone is doing well and keeping safe. It's, you know, it's very similar to what everyone else has been saying. I'm still working full time. Um, I work from home except one day a week. I go into the office. Um, they need a manager on site, so we kind of have switched, you know, the, uh, share days. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it gets lonely. I mean, um, I have my mom who lives about a mile away from us, and so I visit her a couple times a week, and do errands for her if she needs it and um, she's just kind of by herself in her duplex and then of course you know I have Dina who does so I'm not super lonely yeah. but um, yeah it's it's just such a big change it is, that um, everyone's yeah. experienced yeah well you said it you're lucky you have Dina I am um, you know a, a very very gentle and mature young lady you could have a hellraiser uh, you know <laughs> yes if i could <laughs> she reminds me all the time what a good kid she is, she is. <laughs> dina how are you doing um, i'm good how are you i'm well thank you uh school starts this week yeah i think it's on thursday so what, what's up uh, with school now um well we're doing online school and i think we're doing three classes every day that's how it's starting and then i don't know if they're going to change it but we got our schedules a couple days ago okay now you're you're accustomed to this virtual learning because you've had it for a couple of months now yeah so Please. i i kind of know what i'm doing i just need them to send out the zoom codes and stuff and then... yeah you like it um it's okay i miss seeing my friends every day sure. but the workload is like less so I think for people who uh, are focused on studying, it doesn't matter if you're in school or whether you're at your own desk at home. Mm -hmm. Maybe not, no. How about gymnastics? How's that going? Oh, um, well, okay. So we started working in the gym with our partnerships, but then we got cut off. We couldn't do it anymore because the coronavirus was peaking again. So we've just been on a little break, but we'll be back in the gym soon. Okay. Are you staying in shape though? Yeah. Stretching and all that? Yeah, we, we usually like stretch at our own homes and stuff. Wow. Well, as I always say, it's good to see you. People miss you. And uh, maybe one day, maybe in the next six months, we could worship that church again. Who knows? I certainly hope so. Yeah. And I did want to say that Dina turned 16 last oh, week. Yeah. Happy birthday. Oh, I can't believe it. So oh. she's going to be a junior this year. And, yeah. Uh, I was driving soon. Um, yeah, soon, wow. if I can just get my license. Yeah, yeah, no hurry. You know, no, no hurry. Well, it's good seeing you. You both look wonderful, and uh, thanks for sharing some time with us today. Thank, Thank you, you for coming over. My pleasure. All right. How great is that? I love seeing all these videos. Jonathan, thank you so much for going out and saying hello to everyone. and. Happy birthday. How exciting is that? 16 years old. So I know what that's like, right? So um, how wonderful to be all together. So now uh, considering that even though we are apart, we are still together, even if it's done virtually, I encourage you if you are at home to be able to take a candle and light it to remind us that we are one family, the one body of the one Christ.
please join me in the call to worship. Sing praise to God who rescues us when we fall. Sing praise to God who walks with us on all our journeys. Even though we fall, God lifts us and places us on paths of peace. Even though we stray, God finds us and brings us back to lives of hope. Thanks be to God, whose love is continually with us. Praise be to God, whose mercy is over us all. Amen. confess that we don't always turn to you in our troubles. Sometimes we are paralyzed by fear and anxiety. We cannot see the light of your love, but only the ongoing darkness and hopelessness. Clear our sight, O Lord. Bind up our wounded spirits. Fill us with your mercy and love. Forgive us when we stray, when we fear, when we falter. Pick us up and place us on pathways of peace and hope. Amen. No matter what befalls us, the Lord walks with us on the path, bringing us courage and hope. No matter what, we belong to the Lord now and forever. Amen. Be with you 
always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace, either with those you are gathered with or in the comments section with all those gathered together online. Hello, kids. Who's here today? Let me know. So, this is what I have with me today. What is this? It's the mirror. <clears throat> so I look in the mirror and there is me. I see myself. Veronica, mm -hmm. can you see me in the mirror? No, I don't see you. Who do you see? I see me. No, but when I look at it, I see me. Hmm. Let me take another look. Yeah, look again. No, I see a lot of straight hair, no curly. No, no Rola, just... No Rola. All right, so I think that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Because the mirror will reflect the thing that it's aimed at, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason I thought about the mirror is because I think the Bible is a mirror a lot of the times. There's a story we're going to read in the Bible about people called the Israelites mm -hmm. and other people called the Egyptians. And those people like to fight, I'm telling you. They just loved fighting each other. I'm going to come back to the mirror. Mm. You can try it at home. Lucas and Liam, Elia if you're there, Alana and Ethan if you're there. If you look in the mirror, you see yourself then ask your sibling to look and they will see themselves. And the Bible is the same way. Mm. I think the Bible sometimes will reflect God's image if we're focusing on God. But a lot of the times it's really reflecting the image of those people who wrote it. So here's the formula. If you aim at God, you see God's reflection. If you aim at yourself, you see your own reflection. That's what happens when you read the Bible. So I'm going to go back to this story about the people who are fighting each other. And they wrote the story and they wrote about how they fought each other. And then they said that God was fighting with them. Mm. So here's the thing that I know for sure. Fighting is not a loving thing to do. Mm. And I know that God is loving. So I know that God does not fight. Mm. And God does not like fighting. So what I want to leave you with this morning is this. When you read a story about God, ask yourself a question. Does this sound loving? If the answer is yes, then it's probably about God. And if the answer is no, I want you to remember the analogy of the mirror. <laughs> Some stories in the Bible serve as a mirror for the people who wrote them. So they just reflect the story of those people and not the story of God. That is my simple message for you today. Please pray with me. God, give us the wisdom to differentiate your story from other people's stories. And let us only listen to the voice of love. Amen.
please join me in the unison prayer of guidance. Now may the words of our mouth, the meditations of our hearts, the interpretation of our minds and the response of our hands be acceptable to you, our Lord and our Redeemer. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of Exodus, the 14th chapter. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side, so neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and a wall of water on their left. The Egyptians pursued them and all of Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And at daybreak, the sea went back to, into its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and the horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on the right and a wall of water on the left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians laying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. This is the word of the Lord. The second scripture reading comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. And Miriam is singing and dancing in the desert. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. 
my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he cast into the sea. His picked officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrew your adversaries. You sent out your fury. It consumed, consumed them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The flood stood up in a heap. The deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Yet you blew with your wind. The sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, doing wonders? And then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we pray for our time now together. We ask that you will open our hearts, open our minds, and see this scripture anew. For it's in your son's name that we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. There was a really bad dust storm. A really bad, bad dust storm in the desert. And I know what that's like to be in a bad dust storm in the desert. Burning Man last year took place. It didn't happen this year out in the desert. But when those dust storms come, you cannot see in front of you. You need to have a mask over your face. You need goggles on your eyes. They can be really bad and you can barely see what's in front of you. And the wind just keeps blowing and blowing and blowing. And this is what's happening in the scripture. There's a really bad dust storm, and it is separating the Israelites from the Egyptians. So what's going on? The Israelites have been slaves for 400 years. And they're saying, right, we're done. And Moses says, let my people go. So the people decide to go. And the scripture says that they were marching boldly. And they are the people of God. But you have to understand, it's been a long time since they have been around God. It's like a, a memory, a distant memory. And now here they have a leader that is guiding them, and they don't know him. Moses has been gone for 40 years. He had been with them for a while, and then he took off, and now he's coming back saying, let my people go. There's a lot of different things that might be going through their mind of, do we really trust this guy? Do we know this guy? But we're feeling emboldened, and Pharaoh says, fine, let him go. So then they start marching and marching boldly. So we can look at this scripture from a bird's eye view, right? We can look at it from being up high, but what I want us to do is I want us to come down. We, rather than seeing it from like a two-dimensional perspective, I want us to come down and see it from the ground view and what's going on. So you're marching boldly. You're one of the Israelites. 
you're out in the desert you're like right i've got my mom and my dad and my babies and my aunties and my uncles and i have everything i'm taking with me and i'm going i'm going to freedom have no idea where it is but i'm just i'm getting out i'm done with the oppression i'm done with the slavery who here needs to be free from something where are you enslaved right now where is it that you're saying right i'm out i'm going it's time so the people are marching boldly the scripture says that the lord hardened pharaoh's heart and pharaoh kind of snaps out of this funk that he's in and he says what have i done i've just let go of all my labor i i need them back so the scripture says that pharaoh does a 180 and he goes right i'm going after these people and i'm going to get them and i'm going to bring them back and if i don't bring them back i'm going to destroy them he picks 600 of his best chariots and all the other chariots and all officers all over them and he goes to pursue the israelites so remember marching boldly in the desert but all they have to do is to hear the hoof beats and then they're already enslaved all over again all they have to do is just hear the hoof beats of being pursued and it's as if they are back in the trauma with once they had just left. How many of us can have our triggers of things that can bring us back to those pains, those worries, the, those things that just keep us stuck? Pharaoh has not hurt them. Pharaoh has not even reached them. But just hearing it is trauma enough. What are your traumas? What are your triggers? What are the things that keep you up late at night thinking and spinning and spinning and buffering and buffering and worrying and worrying and getting upset and getting upset? What are your hoofbeats? No one died from hoofbeats, but they were there and once they heard it, it stops them. So now they get mad at Moses. And they say to Moses, were there not enough graves in Egypt? Like seriously, you're gonna bring us out here to die? You know, you're, you're this new guy and you said you're gonna protect us. You said you're gonna take care of us. And now we're gonna die. So good old Moses is really frustrated because he says, okay, God, you said you were gonna equip me. You told me you're the one, you're the one that told me to go out and to say, let my people go. Could you help me come up with a better plan? Because you didn't give me enough details. And so that's one of the things that we learn is that sometimes God um, is weak on details and doesn't show us the whole plan of how it's all going to unfold. And yet we're supposed to trust, just trust God. And then when we're in it, we're like, seriously, seriously. So Moses is feeling like God has abandoned, abandoned him and the people are mad at him. And he's like, I didn't sign up for this. What are the things that we have not signed up for? That God, we just feel like you just sort of told us to do it and we trusted and then you just left us. So again, let us see the scene, right? Pharaoh is on the hunt. He's on the pursuit, but it's like Burning Man. They have this big dust storm that's going on and it goes on all night long and you can't see anything and it says that it's it's separated the egyptians the dust storm and it separated the egyptians from the israelites and here's the red sea so they've got a dust storm behind them with the pursuit of people who want to kill them a death squad of 600 chariots and 
soldiers and more than that that want to come out and kill them. And then they're blocked by the Red Sea. They feel like they have no options and nowhere to go. But this is what God wants Moses to do. God says, Moses, can you just look at your hand and see what's in your hand? Moses looks at his hand, and in it is a rod. And Moses thought that this rod would be a rod that he could use to lean on and rest upon when he's tired. But God wants to say to Moses, oh, there's so much more in that rod than you know. Because you are upset, feeling like I've abandoned you, when actually I have already equipped you. So get working. Start trusting and start looking at the resources that you already have. It seems like God throughout the scriptures has given us resources of things that we already have that just seem so ordinary that we don't even recognize them, right? Five loaves of bread and two fish. Some oil, a few seeds. God has already equipped Moses with a stick. So Moses then stretches out his arms, parts the Red Sea. Imagine this story, right? Again, we're just gonna be in it. We're just gonna take it from the ground level and we're just gonna hold this story lightly and listen to the truths that are speaking to us. And the scripture says that the people walked through on dry ground. Where are the places where we have trusted God? Where it has been a challenge to get there, but then God has still helped us get through that time. Well, they start making their way through. And it says that there's a wall of water on the left and the wall of water on the right. Imagine walking through it. Even though God can get us through the tough times, guess what? It can still be scary. It can still be scary because I'm carrying my baby with me because my elderly parents are with me, because my sick child is with me. It can be scary enough to go on our own through the scary times, the scary pathways, but then when we have other loved ones involved, when God makes a way, sometimes it can still just be scary. But this is what the scripture says, Moses, tell your people not to stop. Right now, they need to keep on the move. Keep on the move. Because once you stop, that's when you're going to be overtaken. You just need to keep on the move. So they make their way through, and the Egyptians are held back. They're held off and they make it through, and they get to the other side. They don't cheer as they're going through, but they get to the other side, and then what happens? The enemy, the hoofprint, the, the sounds of the hoofprints, the horses coming on their way, and the Egyptians go into the middle, and then what happens? The very tool, that opened the Red Sea is also the very tool that closed the Red Sea. So often we don't see the tools that God has given us. And sometimes we can celebrate when things are open, but now we also need to celebrate the thing that God closes. 
And then when the Red Sea closes, the people celebrate. The people dance. Miriam gets out her tambourine and she shouts for joy, saying that the chariots and the drivers are no more. What are the things in our lives that we can celebrate, that we can say no more? Because God said to the Israelites, on this very day, you will never see the Egyptians ever again. What are the things or the people or the pains or the worries or the things that have been holding us back that we need to say goodbye to today and we can say no more? Where are the areas where we can celebrate and dance? The areas where we can say, you know what? Thank God that relationship ended. Thank God I didn't get that job. Thank God that business deal didn't come through. Because sometimes we can celebrate the things that do come through, but sometimes we need to celebrate the things that close. Because sometimes it's the things that end and that we will see no more that will save us. It's the things that close, that will end, that will heal our hearts. It's the things that we can finally let go of, as painful as it is, as much as we know it, it is still traumatizing us and enslaving us. And we have to say no more to the things that keep us enslaved. No more. No more. And I need to hear, hear it in here. No more, right? No more. And then we can dance and celebrate. So this last week, I had a desert experience with Miriam, if you can believe it. Burning Man did not happen in the desert, but it happened online. And there's no way that I thought I was going to be able to have a real Burning Man experience in the virtual world, and I actually did. There were different Zoom rooms that you could click on and one of the rooms that I clicked on was grieving and dancing. So what we did was there was probably about 20 of us on this Zoom call, and then all of us, this is one of the things that happens with Burning Man, is that you can get deep real fast with strangers that you don't know all around the world. So a person would share a grief for about one or two minutes, and it could go as deep as it wanted or as light as it wanted or as much detail, but someone would share a grief. We would all listen and hold space. Someone would suggest a song that resonated with that grief. And then that song was played and guess what we did? We all danced. <laughs> we all just danced in front of our computer screens with each other, to celebrate, to grieve, to be able to let go. Be, but I felt like we were all being Miriam in the desert, celebrating and leaning in to one another's hurts and pains, but also celebrating that something new is about to happen. So my dear friends, where is it that you need to say, no more. Where is it that you need to stop worrying and buffering and spinning? Where is it that you can find the tools that you are already equipped with to get through these difficult times? My dear friends, today is the day. Today is the day where we can celebrate the ways that God has gotten, got us through the hard times, but also today is the day to be able to close those things which we cannot get back to. The Israelites can no longer get back to Egypt. There is no way for them to go back. And that is something to celebrate. So let us find freedom. Let us find hope 
and let us find a new day. But most importantly, let us keep moving and not stay stuck, but find the hope that we need and freedom. And all of God's people said, Amen. And then on this day, here. talk about the ultimate place of trying to find our freedom. The ultimate way that we can be unstuck. The ultimate way where we can find our hope through remembering the sacrifice that Jesus gave for us on this day. So friends, they will come from north and south and east and west and sit at the table of the kingdom of God. The scripture says that when the disciples were with Jesus, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is a table for all to come and celebrate and be a part of this communion. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we pray that you will take these ordinary elements, these ordinary gifts that you equip us with, bread and wine, and may you take these elements and these gifts and transform them into the body and blood of Christ. And may you transform us so that we too can be transformed to become the body and blood of Christ. For it's in your son's precious name that we pray. Amen. We are in the presence. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. On the night that Christ was betrayed, he took the bread, and after he blessed it, he broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, my blood poured out for you. Drink this in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's death until he comes again. The gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. And now that you are at home, we encourage you to grab a piece of bread or a cracker or whatever is around you or whatever drink is close by and to partake in the communion with us together. And if you don't have any elements with you, then just spiritually receive it. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. The cup of the new covenant, my blood poured out for you. Drink this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this day, when we remember the Israelites finding their freedom, may we too find our freedom in you. May we remember the sacrifice that you gave upon the cross and the hope and the glory and the forgiveness that you gave. May we remember that day of resurrection and hope. May we too find our resurrection and hope in you and all that is holding us back, all that may be spiritually killing us. May we find new life in your presence, your hope, your glory, and in your love. And it's in your son's precious name that we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen.
We now come to the time of our tithes and our offerings. Gracious God, we lift up these tithes and these offerings that are being given to you. May it go to the greater work of this church, and may we know that we are one body, one community, and, and part of the one cup and the one bread. So may we know that we are all connected, even though we are apart. We ask for your blessings upon us in this offering, and it's in your Son's name we pray. Amen. I invite you now, if you've not had an opportunity to do so, to share any joys or concerns in the comment section so that we can pray for you this morning together as a community in the church. We will offer continued prayers for Joanne Kolb, a friend of Sherry, Sherry Yee, and for all children, parents, and teachers returning to school um, for a successful uh, online opportunity this fall and we continue to pray for Kiyoshi do we have any prayer requests at this time and this is our prayer to the Lord this is our prayer to the Lord Lord hear our prayer um, a friend of mine um, her name is Shirley and um, her mom almost passed away this last Tuesday um, her oxygen oxygen levels were really low and uh, she didn't want to stay in the hospital and the doctor said, if you leave, um, you will pass away. So sometimes we need to listen to our doctors. Mm -hmm. um, and so she, said she stayed and she's, um, you know, alive, but uh, in fragile health. And her name is Yoshiko Kubishiro. Yoshiko Kubishiro. So prayers for Yoshiko and Shirley. And they would really appreciate the prayers. They're very touched that Parkview's praying for them. Thank you for lifting up Shirley and her mother Yoshiko, Pamela, and we hold them in prayer um, and we thank God for the discernment by Yoshiko and her doctor to stay under the care so that she could um, recover. We pray for her continued uh, healing and God's blessing to be upon Yoshiko, Shirley, and their f entire family. This is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Donna and Titus are celebrating Donna's mom's 98th birthday. Wow. Which is today, and they are telling us that she's doing well. I'm so glad to hear that, to hear that your mother is doing well, Donna, and to celebrate with you and Titus your mother's um, 98th birthday. Um, what, a, what a blessing that is to be able to celebrate that. Um, and we give thanks to God for her life and all of the ways that she has loved well. This is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. So uh, we don't have a prayer request at this time, but I want to acknowledge the uh, guests that uh, we didn't see on our pews, but oh. that, um, have been attending worship with us. Uh, we have, let's see, Noreen Nakishima. Noreen. We welcome you to our virtual worship and uh, may notice that she's attended several times already. So, um, yeah, welcome to our virtual worship. Also, young Jane Kim, who 
uh, as uh, I know there's two behind the computer. It's uh, Hannah's mom and dad from Hawaii. Oh, Hannah Seno. So wonderful. welcome to our virtual worship as well. That's so wonderful to hear that you are with us today, um, Noreen, and uh, to Hannah Seno's parents, uh, Young Jun Kim. Welcome. We are so glad. Um, Any time that we get to welcome guests to our worship, we rejoice um, in the fellowship that we can share with others, especially in this time when we're online. Uh, we just thank you for choosing Parkview as, uh, as your place of worship today, and we pray that God's blessing would be with you this day. This is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Also, sorry, I want to extend that to uh, your grandma, Phyllis, who's also with Hi, us. Hi, Nanny. So <laughs> thank you for being with us also. I'm so grateful to, to see that you are here, Nanny, and um, to share in our, our fellowship together from coast to coast. Uh, this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Her name raises a prayer for her Fred's son, Bayou Wilson. 23 years old, he's hospitalized for cardiac arrest. And wow. he is a bright young man, PhD student at UC Berkeley. For cardiac arrest? Mm -hmm. and that happened wow. yesterday. So sorry to hear that, uh, her name. That's, that's very sad news to hear. And we pray for his, uh, his recovery and for all those who are um, caring for him um, at this time and also for all those who are surrounding him with love. Uh, there are some things that happen where we just, our only prayer is God, make it make sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so we pray with all the friends and family at this time for his recovery. This is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I have a prayer request for a friend of mine, um, Renee, uh, her, her father um, was hospitalized and uh, the, the sad news was that the doctor's uh, medicine that was incompatible with uh, other medicines he was taking that they should have been able to see in the chart. So they're not on, the family's not only dealing with the grief about his, uh, his state, he's, he's in a pretty rough state right now. They're also grieving, feeling that the hospital had wronged their family. Um, and so I pray that justice would be done on his behalf and the family's behalf. And mm. um, just that, that God would bring comfort to Renee at this time. Mm. Um, this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Mm -hmm. oh. So we had a, an amazing uh, Presbyterian meeting yesterday. And Greg Christian, our YAD, our Young Adult uh, Advisory Delegate for uh, the Sacramento Presbytery, uh, spoke about his experience at General Assembly. And Greg was amazing. Um, as many of you know, he's a part of the GKI and also uh, the important partner of our Veronica here. And I was just so proud of him, inspiring, amazing. Um, we're hoping to maybe get a, a manuscript of what he said, but he is highly respected in the Presbytery. And that, he was the most inspiring thing yesterday, mm -hmm. and it was just so impressive. So I was just so grateful for the, the youth of our denomination and for the articulation and the beauty that they bring to take a stand for justice. It was just powerful. So mm -hmm. that was a huge gift. Uh, this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. So I don't see any new requests at this time, but I know that it was Kishwar's birthday. Mm. <laughs> um, and May also just uh, informed her that session formally um, approved to add her to the membership of Parkview. So we double celebrate you, Kishwar. <laughs> We're so lucky that you're a member of this community and happy birthday. So Kishwar, our birthday present to you as a church is to officially <laughs> add you to our membership roles, even <laughs> though we know that you have been a member already. Um, yes. And so we celebrate, <laughs> celebrate your birthday with you and all the wonderful gifts that you bring to our church community. This is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
there are no other prayers coming in at this time, please know if you um, add another prayer to the comments section or if there's something that we miss. Our prayer team is always looking over the comments, um, so they will be holding you in prayer this week and um, sending along any prayer requests to us so that we can hold you in prayer as well. Please join me in prayer. Loving God of all creation, all you have made is good. We celebrate the gifts of creation, your earth, water, and air. And we lament, Lord, the destruction of our earth, which is all around us. The fires, the air quality, the smoke, illnesses across the land. God, we are grieving in a special way this morning but we trust you and lift up our prayers to you. We pray for all those who have been displaced in fires and explosions, those who are fearing for the future. We pray for all those who are working for justice and those who are working to protect those who have lost everything. And God, we pray for this earth and we ask, God, that you would accept our repentance and turn our hearts, that we would accept the task of caring for this earth as you have given to the first people. May we take up this task, God, and pay greater attention to the areas in our lives where we need to be changed. Help us to grow in appreciation for all those things that you have given us. We pray rejoicing with those who are experiencing healing, those who are celebrating birthdays, those who are starting new paths and new journeys in their life. And we hold with a longing desire the, the very hearts of those who are seeking healing, those who are seeking new opportunities, those who are seeking closure at the end of old opportunities. And God, in these times of transition, we just pray that you would be with us as we walk on the dry ground and help us to know that your waters will not cascade over us, but you will hold us fast. We pray for all those names that have been lifted up and for all those names that remain on our hearts and not yet on our lips. God, I pray that you would continue to nourish this congregation with the spiritual bread of life. Encourage us daily to be the church, to love one another more dearly. And we pray all of this in the strong name of Jesus, remembering the prayer that Jesus taught us and joining together in one voice across the world, saying, Our heavenly parent who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
friends, receive the benediction. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Thank you for joining us for worship today. Um, our congregational meeting will be starting right now, and that's why I gave the blessing instead of Pamela. She's going right now to set that up, so she will be joining you. Rola and I will not be joining you, um, and we hope you have a very productive conversation. Hope that you can all join that meeting. Um, please attend if you can. Thank you. Thank you.